Welcome back. You're watching today on ENC8 GSTV Channel 43 with me, Dan Moyan. Now, Niger President Mohamed Bazoum has been ousted in a military coup. He's being held captive by the soldiers who've also suspended the country's constitution. Wednesday's turn of events uh, sparked both local and international outcry as the West African nation's land borders have also been temporarily closed. President Bazoum came to office two years ago, and this was the country's first democratic transfer of power. There's been a long history of military coups in Niger since its independence from France in 1960. International Crisis Group's consultant Liesl Lowe-Vaudron joins me now to discuss this development in West Africa. Good afternoon, Liesl. Thank you very much for your time. I mean, one would have been hoping that after a long history of military rule in Niger, two years ago would have heralded a new stable democratic uh, era for the country, but it doesn't seem so after yesterday. Good afternoon, Dan. Yes, absolutely. This has been a shocking couple of hours since actually yesterday morning when the presidential guard initially um, captured and held uh, President Mohamed Bazoum hostage, as you know, and have now taken over the country. In fact, um, it was uh, two years ago, it was big news when uh, the former president, Isufu, stepped down. And the worrying thing is that actually... Uh, Niger had one of the last um, democratically elect elected leaders in that Sahel region because, you know, surrounded by Mali, Burkina Faso on, on both sides that have now got military rulers, Chad, uh, you know, in the east, uh, also an unconstitutional change of government. And all these countries face terror threats. I just came back from Nairobi last week where the African Union was meeting and they were condemning coups in the Sahel, but also sort of thinking of ways to help these countries because um, Niger specifically also is threatened on the one side by Boko Haram, uh, on the eastern and the Lake Chad uh, Basin side, and then um, the other Al-Qaeda groups, the jihadist groups, um, you know, on the other borders of uh, of Niger. It is extremely, extremely worrying that now, you know, you have another government that actually will have to be suspended from the African Union because the rules of the African Union state that if there is a military coup and constitutional change of government, um, there has to be a suspension. So you have Mali, Burkina, Guinea on the uh, on the coast. You you know you you will have to have Niger, and then Sudan is also suspended from the African Union. So um, it is it is really a, a devastating uh, new turn of events. Yeah. Do you have any idea of Have you seen news about the whereabouts, the exact whereabouts of President Bazoum? No, for the for the moment, he's still in his presidential palace, surrounded by these this presidential guard. And actually, those are the, the two outstanding things at this moment um, from the reports, obviously, that we are getting is that he hasn't officially announced, right, he's stepping down, which, you know, that will be the next step if there's a coup. Um, people say, you know, he's fine, he's, um, he's not okay. being threatened. I mean, his life is not threatened in any way. Um, but also the head of the presidential guard wasn't part of this group of soldiers who announced that they're now taking over the, the country. Um, the very, uh, a very well-known, you know, um, general. Um, so there are still some outstanding issues, uncertainties. This former president, Mamadou Isufu, who is a very well-known um you know, I would say a uh, well-respected leader uh, across Africa has apparently uh, been trying to also negotiate some kind of deal with these um, coup makers. And one can imagine, as I've noted, you know, uh, the outcry, mm. all I mean, Western countries have really counted on Niger to, to be kind of a uh, to take a stand for democracy in the region. I can imagine that there's a lot of pressure and a lot of efforts that are going on behind the scenes to actually make sure that uh, Niger, um, you know, that the, the, that, yeah, that the coup uh, fails. But at this point, it really looks like, um, unfortunately, you know, you're going to have another military regime in Niger. 
Yeah, Liesl, you were in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, last week at a meeting of the African Union, uh, uh, with whom you work as well. But, but, but what else can they do? I mean, there's been widespread international condemnation of the latest coup, but we've seen Burkina Faso, Guinea, as you've said, Mali, back in the hands of the military, West Africa seemingly having been stable for quite some time, and the generals not ruling, it looks like there's a new move for them to be taking power. What can the AU actually do besides just condemning it? And we've also got the regional body ECOWAS. I wonder what their role can be here. Yes, absolutely. This is a huge conundrum really for the African Union. And uh, as you said, I was in Nairobi now, there was a mid-year summit of the African Union. There were many high level discussions, new initiatives launched. For example, the African Union uh, launched something it's called the African Facility for Countries in Transition, meaning then Mali, uh, Burkina Faso and so on. Because they realized that, you know, you have to engage with these countries. Um, the African Union has to do it because nobody else is doing it. And you also have the population, you know, you have, you can deal with civil society and others. So, um, so, so what can the African Union do? That is something that is supporting mm. um, civil society, other groups within the, those countries where you then have military regimes that might be suspended from the African Union. And the AU clearly said, I mean, uh, Musafaki Mohammad and the head of the Commission for Peace and Security, Bankole, uh, Commissioner Bankole said, we're not sitting down with coup leaders as the African Union, but we are trying to engage in other ways then. So that's one dialogue um, to reestablish democracy. You know, when these guys come to power, all they say is, yes, you know, mm, we are here yeah. because uh, we don't even trust the um, governments in place. They corrupt. And also they haven't actually shown that they can protect citizens. That's the big thing. You know, people are yeah. desperate. And, you know, yeah, the terror situation is really, really very yeah, yeah, serious. Yeah. No, so, you know, um, dialogue with these countries uh, is, 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 is one of the only things the African Union can do. Thank you very much, Liesl. Liesl Lowe Vaudron. She is, of course, uh, with the International Crisis Group. She just returned from an AU meeting in Nairobi. And we're just getting her insights and the inf latest she might have about what's going on in Niger in the West African Sahel region, where there's been another coup. I mean, there's been several recently, Burkina Faso, Mali, and it looks like West Africa might be going back to those old bad days of generals ruling those countries.